Hi everyone, it's Neve here and welcome to my art journaling channel. Today we're going to be doing some really simple mic making in my journal page. And this is one of my favourite things to do when I'm really not sure what I want to do. It's always bright and happy and it just makes me feel good. So I tend to just grab out a paintbrush, grab out my favourite colour paints and go for it. Thank you to all those people who've been mentioning my lovely Woody with my sprinkles on it. Um, uh, it's been a bit cold in my, my art room recently, so I'm not wearing my pyjamas. It is over the top of my clothes, <laughs> but uh, it keeps me very warm and toasty. So if you don't have one, I highly, highly suggest yeah, you get one. So I'm going in with lots of bright rainbow colours because they just make me happy. I'm using a little bit of paint. Um, this is one of the things I find probably is um, a big difference when I see sort of people starting out with painting um, compared to people who've been painting for a little while. You really don't need that much paint, especially if you're using good quality paints, they go a long way. So a little bit, if you need more, put more out, but you really don't need much to get coverage on your page. Um, if you use a little bit, they dry pretty quickly. So, you know, most of those colours without much heating in between, I was actually able to go in and paint quite different colours over the top of each other without them blending together because it had pretty much dried by the time I put it down. My other trick is putting down three colours so I get some of those visual triangles happening on my page. So now I've gone in with a big chunk of paint over the top. This is a fluid acrylic. It's one I got from Officeworks in a big bottle. Um, <clears throat> Obviously fluid acrylics are much more translucent. They're pretty much like glazes. So if you don't have something like this, you can um, certainly mix some paint with some clear gel medium um, and make it pretty thin. So you can sort of see through the paint. Then with my wet wipe, I've just wiped through it. So the reason I did that was just to get some texture on the page, some different lines and so on. And you can see when I did it, I painted over a number of different colors as well. So it sort of blends those hard edges. When I'm going in with my mic making, so um, I'm just using different random paint brushes. They're pretty cheap ones that I've picked up for my kids because um, I like short handles and all the kids ones have different sizes and shapes and I don't mind being rough with them. I'm just going in with different color paints. A lot of the paint colors, they're ones I've kind of used in the background or different shades of or brighter shades of colors I've used in the background. With those orange dots, I just used the brush width and made dots across the page, going in and doing lines. So it's nothing complicated. But again, like the colors in the background, I tend to do it in three places. So you get sort of those triangles. With the dots in the background, I didn't do it in three places, but I did have it sort of connecting from one edge to the other. So it sort of flowed across the page a little bit. Now I'm going in, you can see I've just changed my brush, brush width, so this is a larger flat brush. And again, using one of the colours I use in the background, just coming in and putting some extra colour in. So you see just layering up different things over the top. Um, with the sponge I've got there, it's something I came up with recently because I'm constantly using um, paper towels, so I've just got a little sponge a little container with water so the sponge stays damp and when I'm sort of cleaning off my brush I can sort of wipe it on that to make sure it's nice and clean. It's been working okay for me except I've got less room on my desk now which is a bit frustrating. One of the final marks I'm putting in is some white. So I often find once I've sort of got all my colours on the page going in with a little bit of white and a little bit of black gives you the contrast in the page. With that thick um, Posca paint pen um, that's the 5M or 7 no it's a 7M so it's quite big and it's a bullet tip. You also saw me take a picture of my page so this is something I really recommend if you're doing pages like this with just the mic making go ahead and take a photo of it um, because you can then go in and print it out and you've got lots of multiple copies that you could use for something else or you can cut up to use for backgrounds on cards or you can die cut shapes out of them so if you create a background you really like take a photo of it and then you can do all sorts of different things with it. Now obviously I'm happy to do that because that was basically paint in the background. It does change a little bit and you need to check out rules if you're using stamped images and so on on it. But if you've just got paint and marks in the background, go for it. The sticker that I've just put over the top, again, is something a little bit unusual. Um, 
I was given a whole heap of the Flow paper magazines, which is basically just a magazine full of different craft projects and stickers and cards and envelopes and all sorts of random things. And one of the random things in it was this beautiful um, silhouette large sticker um, that has been sitting in my don't throw away box for like five years now, I think. And I came across it when I was making some junk journals and I thought, no, I need to use this somewhere. So this was a perfect opportunity because I really like the background. I didn't want to cover it up. Having that beautiful black image over the top really um, helped to boost the color. I found as I was going, because the sticker um, was actually quite matte that it took uh, the paint pen quite well. So I was able to go in and put a little bit of doodling over some of those shapes just to boost the colour a little bit, just to add a little bit of extra interest to it. So I was able to put the sort of stitched edge on the um, border to frame it, put in some little um, marks and hoops and um, mermaid scales, I don't know what you call that pattern, in the background as well, just to add a little bit of difference to the flowers to help pop them out a little bit. So it's just a really fun way to sort of play around with it. With the um, sticker paper itself, it's kind of matte, so obviously I've got a shine in it now, but when you sort of tilt it up, it, it does actually have a matte finish to it, which is quite nice. And I really liked, uh, I wanted to add the quote. So the quote was from a Art by Mylene sticker book. I think it was Love Always, but I cut it out and reversed the words because I wanted to have always love. I thought that was a more important quote for me to have. So here you can see in the close-up those marks in the background, how the sticker paper went over the top. Now if you've got a die cutting machine you could die cut something out of black to put over the top. You could stamp something in black or even just draw some black over the top to give you that contrast. You don't need to have a big sticker like I did but um, the background itself is probably the bit that you know if you can take and use in different ways. And I'd certainly if you're a card maker or a scrapbooker um, using a background like that for your backgrounds is just a perfect way um, to use them um, and if as I said you had a die cut machine you could die cut those shapes to get some really cool images too. Thank you so much for watching until next time bye for now.